vlog. What I'm going to show you today is something that I came across recently, um, earlier today actually. I was over at the F-Stoppers Facebook group and a person had mentioned, um, either it was F-Stoppers or it was another one. Actually that's neither here nor there, but they were editing a video and they were curious about, they weren't happy with the controls that they had within Premiere 2015. And they wanted to apply a certain effect over everything and again they were used to working into in a photo environment and they weren't comfortable with what was in Premiere and I, I briefly mentioned to them I'm like well you you know that you can go into uh, Photoshop make your adjustments there and then export that as a LUT which you can come back and apply over here which he didn't realize which got me thinking that maybe this is something that everybody else wasn't aware of now with the new introduction of the Lumetri color panel in 2015 Premiere Pro, some of this stuff may not make as much of a difference as it would have maybe a month or so ago. Depending on how you work, maybe you are more comfortable with the uh, controls in Photoshop. But let me show you how we can go about doing this. So what you want to do here first, and I'll link to this footage in the, this is not my footage, I'll link to it in the description below. So we have this footage here. So what I want to do, obviously, if, if I want to bring this into Photoshop, I'm going to have to export this as a image file. So we're going to come here. I'm going to leave this as Targa. That's going to save most of the data there. You don't necessarily want to use a JPEG, especially if you're going to be exporting it out. I mean, you could, it could be a high quality JPEG, but I usually like to do Targa. I guess you could also use TIFF if you wanted to. So I'm gonna come over here. Let's do uh, maybe export photo for Photoshop or whatever you wanna reference it as. I'll leave it as my desktop and then I'll click okay. All right, and I have Photoshop open. So there we go. So now all we have to do obviously here is go to file open and then locate the file. Let's see. Export photo, Targa, there we go. And we have our screen capture. <clears throat> Maybe not the best, I got it during uh, some motion blur there. But you get the idea. There is a couple things I wanted to show you in here that may be of a benefit. You could use scopes in something like Premiere or another video editing program. But what I like to do here, so this is um, some flat footage from a Blackmagic camera. So I'm gonna come in here. I'm going to add an adjustment layer and this is pretty much where you're going to be working. You can't, that's one thing I should mention too, is you can't necessarily come up here and apply all sorts of filters and expect it to translate over into Premiere. Uh, so let's say you do some, if you want to come up here and do liquify or, or something along those lines, there's nothing that immediately translates over into Premiere that would make sense. So what we can do here. Now obviously you can come in here and make your adjustments and, and work it all out. But if you want it to be somewhat precise, if you hold the Alt button, excuse me, or Option on a Mac, and I'm gonna keep that pressed down, I'm gonna slide this over. You can see the screen turns white. Now I'm gonna keep sliding it up till I reach the end of that histogram there. And you'll start to see, and right there, you start to see the black come through. Now that would be where the black points are and as you can see so let's off and on and what I think I'm going to do is back up just a little bit to recover some of that and of course you can do the same with the white I'm going to hold down alt on my windows machine slide it over it's black till we see the white maybe a little bit back there and as you saw the white was right there and when we were in the black the black was around here on his shirt so let me do that one more time just to kind of dial it in. All right, and now we have, we've added some contrast into, into the image there. So let's go into something different. I'm gonna come up here. Now this is something we didn't have before until the most recent release of Premiere Pro 2015, but you have the Vibrant slider here. So we can come in here and this will take the least saturated parts of the image and make them more saturated and it preserves the skin tone so let me do this 
All right, and actually we can actually select those particular colors too. So I'm gonna come into hue and saturation. Let's go ahead and choose the reds. I'm gonna grab some color on his face here. Let's slide the saturation over. So it's too much. All right, and then we're gonna come back, come back. That looks pretty good. Off and on. And another thing I like for this too, which is something you can do in other programs, but I'm very used to doing in photo editing apps. So now it's nice that we can do this where we can send it over. I'm gonna come into levels, come into the blue channel. Let's put some blue into the shadows. Not too much there, some blue. And very little yellow here. Into the highlights. See how that affected everything. All right, that looks pretty good. I might be able to add more contrast, but you know what, I'm gonna leave it just like that. So here we are, we have our adjustments that we made. So I'm gonna shift select, come up here, file, export, color lookup table, which is a lot, a lookup table. So color lookup table. Here's our export dialog. And let me change that to blue. All right, and we can put the copy right here. Obviously we can put our name and whatever we want it to. 64 is probably what you wanna do. You wanna keep that high. Uh, usually all these are checked. Now I, I have done this before, so all these formats are were checked, but I usually just leave it at cube, which is why you only see cube here because it retained my settings. So cube, 64 grid points, we'll leave that at high. Again, you can put in your information there. All right, description. Uh, you know what? Let's just change that to blue. We don't need to leave the TGA at the end. Click OK. And I'm gonna change this to blue LUT. All right, we'll leave that on the desktop. We'll let it do its thing. For the record, yes, it will do what you just saw on the screen. So let's minimize this. <clears throat> Come back in here. I'm gonna go into effects. I have the Lumetri color, so I'm gonna double click that. I'm gonna come down to creative, look, browse, and then I'm going to change, uh, I'm going to select that blue LUT. And the adjustments we made in Photoshop are now going to appear here. And just for a little side-by-side -side comparison, you can see that it translates pretty well. Let me go ahead and make these roughly, uh, let's do this, slide this over a little bit. And as you can see, it, it really translates really well. It's almost a one-for-one -one pixel uh, translation. And uh, again, you would have to stay within these adjustment, this adjustment panel here and sort of be realistic about what you're trying. It's mostly color adjustments and contrast, saturation, things like that. If you start doing sharpening and liquify and things that are very exclusive to just Photoshop, you may not get the resi desired results over in Premiere. And of course, you could just take this and you could apply it to your footage if you needed to, like all over all your footage if you needed to. You can share this LUT with anybody now. So I really hope that helped. 